Hello everyone, welcome back to the Traction YouTube channel and welcome to Laguna Seca where we're going to be doing the Global Mazda MX-5 Cup track guide. Now Laguna Seca is very, very special to me, although it's not my favourite track to race. It's where I did my first ever race on iRacing and it's where I got my first ever win. Now if you've followed my track guides before, you'll know that they are not a place just for hot laps. It's a slow, methodical approach to learn the circuit where I talk about my braking markers, my reference points and the little quirks that each circuit has. So as usual, I will show you a flying lap in full, then we'll jump in the car, do a few laps, show you those braking markers and reference points in action. Then at the end, we'll talk about pit entry, pit exit, and where I think you might be able to overtake here at Laguna Seca. So enough talking, let's get on track. So here we are then on the main straight here at Laguna Seca. So as usual, we've set the sim time to match the official series. So it's the 5th of March, 2022, and the time in the sim is 8.20 a.m. We're also using the iRacing baseline setup, which is what is used in the official series. And track temperature right now is 27 degrees Celsius, exactly the same as it was in the flying lap that you've just seen. Now, Laguna Seca, much more technical than people give it credit for. This is where I did my first ever race on iRace, and this is where I got my first ever win. So, going down to turn number one, well, this is turn number one, going over the crest. We just want to keep over to the left-hand side as tight as we possibly can. And then when we get around this corner here, we're just going to move the car over to the right for the braking zone into turn number two. And I use this white line going across the side of the circuit there. So, braking right about the three board and we're going to be breaking all the way down into first gear now there's a couple of ways you can take turn number two you can either hold a tight line which is what i did in the flying lap or you can run it in deep and cut it back for a second apex either way there's not too much difference in time because you whatever you lose going in with the double apex approach you gain on exit so i like to break nice and hard around about 80 percent 85 percent Hold the brakes all the way to the apex. And you can either hold a tight line, like I mentioned, or run it in deep. But all we want to be doing is get on the gas at the second apex. Hard on the gas here. Keep turning left. Keep your left hand down because the track continues to go to the left. So then when we get round turn number two, we're going to be approaching turn number three. We're going to be moving over to the left hand side and getting your left wheels on the curb to open up turn number three as much as you can now you just need a little bit of break here now a little tip at laguna seca pretty much everywhere you can turn in just as the curb ends on entry so where you can see the number one board there 
and there's a, a white triangle you can pretty much turn in just about there or just before this is second gear now you saw in the flying lap i took quite a bit of this sausage curb on the inside sometimes that does help with rotation when your tires are a little bit cold just prevents a little bit of understeer but either way if you take that don't take it it's up to you as long as you get your turning right you should be fine get back on the accelerator move the car right over to the left on this curb but then get the car back on the track before the curb ends and then we're going to go back on to the curb here and again we're going to turn in just before the end of the curb a little lift but then back on the gas third gear all the way down here then up to fourth Then move the car over to the right hand side for turn number five now i use again there's another white line there you can see just after the three just in front of us there that's kind of what i use as my braking marker for turn number five and we're going to be hard on the brakes down to third gear and then down to second gear the car will be screaming but you need that rpm for the run up the hill again get as tight as you can on the inside here because a lot of the turns here at laguna seca are banked on the inside close to the curb to get as tight as you can on the apex then get on the gas second gear let the car run all the way out wide on this curb and then the run up to the kink one of the most tricky turns on the circuit to get right but it's not too difficult if you know what you're looking for so you can see right in front of us there looking at the blue and white curb you can see just above the instrument cluster there's a definite darker patch now you can that's more prominent when you're going a bit quicker now that's what i use as my reference point for turning well, and we're not going to be breaking here maybe on the first lap a tiny tiny bit of break maybe five percent just to get the car slowed a little bit but when the tires are warm all we're going to be doing here is lifting so at the end of the darker part of the curb on the right just after the two we're going to be lifting and we're going to be starting to turn in because the entry is blind so lifting off the throttle as soon as you get to this point it dips down there's loads and loads of grip here as your car goes into the dip the suspension compresses get on the accelerator as hard as you can the car will run out wide and then the run up the hill to the corkscrew which is actually not as bad as you would think so it's third gear up here we're going to be approaching the corkscrew aiming for the number three there and we're going to get our right tires on the curb and when we get to this point we're going to be hard on the brakes down into second gear then down into first gear holding the brakes nice and tight around here and then a little tip as soon as you get to this point you can see these trees in front of us now so you've got the two trees on the left and then there's the lone tree in front if you're aiming at that lone tree you are bang on track to hit the apex on exit so let's just see if we are there you can see we aim for that tree and we're right on the apex you can short shift a second if you wish going down the hill but i tend to hold first then up to second then up to third as soon as we change into third we're going to lift let the car just coast into the apex then get on the gas nice and hard and the same with turn number 10 we're going to be breaking a little bit just as the curb starts but we want to be nice and tight you can see how banked it is on the inside and then move the car back over to the right for the final turn now braking here around about the two we're going to be hard on the brakes down to first gear really late turning for the final turn and at the apex there get on the gas let the car run out wide you did never used to be able to use the astroturf on exit of turn 11 but you can now so we'll pick up the pace a little bit now so turn number one we're going to be nice and tight on the left hand side up to fourth gear then we're going to move the car over to the right we're going to look for that white line there it is so we're going to be hard on the brakes all the brakes down to first gears this is what i mean by a double apex and then you can get back on the gas there so there's two approaches there so we're going to move the car over to the left left tires on the curb and we're going to be braking slightly just trail brake and then get on the gas at the apex let the car run all the way out wide up to third then we're going to lift here and then back on the gas again at the apex again try and use as much of the track as you can then up to fourth we're going to be looking for the white line on the right hand side there we are breaking down to third down to second nice and tight and then get on the accelerator because you need those the rpm to get you up this hill now look for the darker part of the curb on the right there it is so we're going to lift just at the end turn in then get on the gas at the apex just as the car dips 
Then here, keep your eye on the tree that I mentioned. And then we're breaking all the way down into first gear. Nice and tight. There's the tree. Dead easy when you spot it. And just as you're changing to third, we're going to lift. Let the car coast into the apex and get on the accelerator. Move the car over to the left. Little bit of brake at the two board. Just to get the car to the apex, then on the gas. And back over to the right. Braking again at the two. Hard on the brakes, down to first gear. Late turn in and get on the gas just before the apex. Right, we'll do one more lap. Try and pick up the pace a little bit more. Again, turn one, nice and tight on the left-hand side. We're going to be looking for that white line on the right-hand side as we move the car over. So just before the three, there it is. I'll hold a nice tight line this time around here. Either way, it doesn't matter. Speed, the, t the time difference is very small. Get on the gas just before the apex. And then lift just at the two. Then get on the gas before the apex. It's all about momentum, this section. And looking for that white line again. Hard on the brakes. Out the second gear, nice and tight. Then get on the gas. The car will run out wide, use this curb on exit. Now we're looking for the changing colour on the curbing on the right. There it is. So just at the end of it, we're going to lift. We're going to accelerate just before the apex. Really easy to run wide there, though. You've got to be very, very careful on cold tyres. Hold third gear all the way up here. Braking at the curb. Down to second. Down to first. Nice and tight. Look for that tree. There it is. And just as we change into third, we're going to lift. Let the car coast to the apex. Then get on the gas before. Move the car over to the left-hand side. Little bit of brake at the two. Just to get the car into that apex there. And braking at the two board hard. Late apex. Down to first gear. Get on the gas before the apex. Let the car run all the way out wide on exit. So that's a nice steady lap. Laguna Seca. What do we get? A 38.3. So a bit slower than the flying lap that you saw. Uh, 0.8 of a second. The tyres still aren't quite up to temperature. Right, let's have a look at pit entry, pit exit, and where we can overtake. So pit entry and pit exit here at Laguna Seca, both actually quite tricky. Pit entry is probably one of the worst on iRacing for me anyway. So we're coming around turn number 10, just approaching the final turn, and pit entry is just before. So if you need to pit in the Global Mazda series, it's either because you've got damage that you need to get your fast repair, or you've got a penalty that you haven't cleared. So pit entry is here on the left-hand side. We're going to be all the way down to first gear. Now, there's a horrible little left turn here, so we need our car as far over to the right as we possibly can to make the turn. So you need your car here, and then we're going to turn it in nice and tight, and there's the yellow cone. So you need your pit limiter on by that point. Really, really tricky. Just got to make sure that you get your car over to the right, just to give you enough room to get your left turn done. Now, pit exit. There's the green cone. So we're going to release the limiter, and we're going to be accelerating all the way up the hill, all the way over, nice and tight on the left-hand side. Now, I like to brake just at the end of the poles on the right-hand side there. Now, this is a really, really tricky pit exit because it's really, really tight. We're going to go all the way down to first gear. It's really, really tight. You've got sand on the left and the right, and it's off camber. So you've got to be really, really careful, really gentle on pit exit there because it's so easy to run onto the sand. Now, when you exit pit road, this is going to be the exit of turn number two, and cars are going to want to start moving over to the left-hand side. So just as you come out of pit, pit road there, keep your car right over to the left. If somebody's coming, just, just yield. Let them go and try and jump in behind them when you can. So it's not the it's not the exit of pit road that's the problem. It's that little left turn at the end. So pit entry, be very, very careful. Make sure you've got enough room to actually turn left. Pit exit, watch for the sand. Right, where we're going to overtake this week. So, overtaken here at Laguna Seca. Now, as usual, we're going to assume that people are going to defend into the usual overtaking places, such as 
turn number two. And at the end of any long straight, we're going to assume that people are going to defend. If not, you just try and go up the inside as usual everywhere. So, turn number two, people are defending. That we're going to assume. We're going to try and make them take a defensive line. If they move over to the right, we'll slip up the inside. But we want to try and stay behind them here as long as as long as we can because we want them to take a nice tight line so they run deep into turn number two now as we approach here they're taking a nice uh, tight line we're going to move our car right over to the right as usual and we're going to try and take our normal line now we're going to hope that these guys are here and they run really deep trying to defend on the brakes and if they do then we're just going to slip up the inside around turn number two so that's where i'll be trying to overtake there here there's not really much space between turns two and turn three to get a run on anybody so you're just gonna have to try and stay as close as you can here around turn number three and turn number four because again they're probably going to defend going into turn number five and if they do then that's fine we can maybe try and get a better run coming out of turn number five get a really good exit if we can get a really good exit and up the inside going into the kink then that is definitely an overtaking opportunity however if you're on the outside going into the kink personally i would back out because it's really easy to, to push a little bit wide if you're on the inside if you're carrying too much speed and i certainly don't want to be the guy on the outside that gets punted off into the sand so up the inside there if you're long side go for it fill your boots if you're on the outside i would just yield and let them have it now the run up to the corkscrew again this is a good overtaking place here either way really on the outside here if you're alongside somebody it's everybody's got to break and slow down to first gear so any contact you do have might be quite minimal now if you can hold a tight line you can get a better exit coming out of the corkscrew and then you've got the inside line for turn number nine but if somebody defends if you can hold the outside line around here and get on the gas a little bit sooner than them at this point then you can then hold a wider line around turn number nine and if you do that then you've got the inside line for turn number 10 and i would think then by that point you've got the overtake done and again somebody's going to defend going into the final turn same story we're going to try and make them defend as long as they can and then we're going to try and take our usual line and get a better exit difficult to overtake here if somebody defends but it can be done as long as you're racing with somebody that plays ball and wants to race clean should be a good week so there we go that's laguna seca done please let me know down below in the comments how you get on what were your lap times before the guide and what were your lap times after did i help did i cover everything that you wanted to be covered in a track guide as always thank you for watching good luck keep it pinned